hello, hello. I'm so excited for today's my blueprint story. So I'm just going to let you kick it off and share who you are, what you do, and how long you've been in business. Perfect. Hi, I'm Leah Sachs. I'm the owner of Leah E. Moss Designs. I am a calligrapher and watercolor artist. I specialize in designing custom wedding stationery and doing event branding for couples to help them tell their story. I have been full time since November of 2016, and I was part time um, for a couple of years prior to that um, as my side hustle with a day job. I love that. Um, I will you just tell everybody how we met and how long we've been internet friends and then real life friends. <laughs> um, so I started stalking you a while ago, and that's sort of how we met. Let's be real. Um, and I took the blueprint model in 2018. So I had started with the class in January of 2018. Um, I had been in business one year at that point, and I knew that after one full calendar year that I wanted to have some stuff in place. So I found you, I stalked you, and that's how we met. <laughs> And um, I then came to Blueprint Summit in November of 2018 after having gone through the Blueprint model. And we had that first hug in real life. And I was like, dang, she's a really good hugger. <laughs> and that was that. I love hugs. I do love hugs. You're a good hugger too. Um, okay. I'm so excited for you to share your story today. It's just been such a joy to get to know you over the last I mean, year, over a year at this point, which has been amazing. And so many things have happened. So tell everybody, we're going to talk today about pricing, the things that you've learned. But I just want you to share the story you kind of shared with me before we started recording of how you were feeling before, how many brides you were taking on, kind of that big aha moment with your pricing, or really two aha moments with your pricing. So... In 2017, it was my first year in business being full-time for myself. So I said yes to everything. I had to put a roof over my head. And so it was like, say yes, figure out, figure it out. And I ended up pulling my hair out and was run ragged by the end of the year, which is what prompted me to take the blueprint model. So I was so excited about the module about tracking your time and figuring out, you know, what services you wanted to offer and working through all of that. And then we got to the calculation of what your hourly rate is. And I, when I had started the class, it was like, okay, well, I'm booked all the time. I'm busy. And why do I feel like I'm only making ends meet? I feel like I can put a roof over my head and I'm scraping by, but I'm not like feeling like I'm making enough for the amount of work that I'm churning out. So we got to the pricing, we did our hourly, I inputted all the time that I was spending $3.79 an hour. And I just sat there for a minute. I closed my laptop. And I burst into tears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like the most gut-wrenching, horrible thing that um, I was working really hard. And I loved working with all my clients. And I really felt like I loved the work I was doing. But there was my answer. That's why I wasn't making yeah. any money because what I was charging didn't make sense for what I was offering. Mm -hmm. And I remember that day so clearly. It just was like a stomach punch. It was yeah. horrible. And Adam came home, my husband came home and found me sitting at the kitchen counter. We have bar stools and I was sitting on bar stools sobbing. And that day I like, I vowed, I was like, when we get this pricing formula, I'm raising my pricing. Like I can't live like this. I felt so good about it. I felt fired up. And then we got to the pricing formula and I saw the number that it spit out of what my pricing should be. And I chickened out. Yeah. I looked at that number and I was like, there is no way anybody's paying that. Yeah. There's just not. And so I psyched myself out. I talked down to myself. I told myself that I wasn't, I wasn't worth that level of investment from a client. And I just kind of shut down the idea that I would ever be charging anything like 
near that amount. So I raised my prices a little. And in my head, I tried to tell myself, I was like, well, you're making more than $3.79 an hour. You raised your pricing, feel good about that, you know? And that was that. And, um, but it just wasn't anywhere near the level of what it should have been for the service that, you know, was being generated. Yeah. So cut to Blueprint Summit in person, however many months later this was. So I was at a table with all of these other paper ladies, you know, people in the stationary industry, other calligraphers, other stationary designers, other invitation artists. And so we're all going around the table and talking about what we specialize in, what we offer, what we do, and what we charge. And so it got to me, and I'm talking about the fact that everything I do is fully custom. I paint, you know, the watercolor elements. Everything's done by hand in calligraphy. It then all gets scanned in. It's done totally custom for every couple and what I charge. And then that I specialize in event branding. So it's not just the invitation, but then also all of the stuff for the couple on the day of their wedding, whether it's menus for guests and cocktail napkins and stuff for their bars and matchbooks and whatever. And what I charge. And these women's faces looked like I had seven heads. Yeah. They just were like totally stone faced, like, what? Yeah. And they gave me this look like, you've got to be kidding me. That's what you charge for that? Yeah. My pricing for a fully custom invitation was like what they were charging for a semi custom collection. Um, what I was charging for an invitation and day of, you know, full suite of pieces was what they were charging for just a custom invitation. And they were like, you are worth so much more. Why are you, why are you shortchanging yourself? Um, you are doing so much. You are worth that. And I had shortchanged myself and it took women that I had never even met these women in real life, but they became fast friends and they became somebody that understood it. And it took them saying to me, like, what? For me to recognize that fallacy myself. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like the numbers made sense to you, but you didn't, you weren't able to really hold on to those numbers and you needed somebody else to give you that confidence. A hundred percent. I did not have the confidence to, to own that number for myself. Yeah. So since that day, what are kind of the one to three steps you've been taking? So that was about six months, about six months ago, a little, maybe, Oh my gosh. Four or five. Yeah. Four, four or five. Yeah. 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 So since then, what have you been doing? Kind of what are the steps you're taking? Because raising your prices that much is probably not an overnight thing. Um, but share with everybody kind of the one to three steps you're taking now that you're like, okay, I've got to do this. So actually the night of summit, it's like a two day thing. So the first night I was staying in an Airbnb with one of the other stationary gals and I stayed up like most of the night. I remember coming into the second morning of summit and my t-shirt, like girl's going to need a cup of coffee because (laughs) I had been so wired and so energized. I literally sat in Google spreadsheets that night in my Airbnb, like with my little flashlight, figuring out pricing and figuring out structures and figuring out how I could implement some changes that day. I then got home. We had our wedding celebration that weekend. So everything got kind of put on hold. I remember that. Oh my goodness. That's a yeah. trooper to come to Summit right the before your wedding. Of, yeah, it was a little bit crazy, but it was well worth it. And so after <laughs> after the wedding celebration, I sort of took a really holistic look. I said, I need to fix some things on my website and to showcase that if I want to charge for a luxury service, my website should reflect the luxury bride and groom that I want to be reaching. Um, I need to have, you know, some connections, you know, well, well loved, you know, I work with a lot of planners and that sort of a thing. So I need to hone in on making sure that they have the tools they need to help showcase my work. Um, and those were sort of not 
pricing specific, but they were pricing adjacent that helped reflect my brand to make it um, uh, make it match with what the pricing would reflect. And so working with top tier planners and top tier photographers and having a top tier website and then, you know, using Dubsado as a CRM tool to have a, you know, a luxury client experience, all of those things are in tandem with a luxury price point. Um, and then I just raised my pricing, put it out there. I totally redid my formula. I have a range now on my website with a minimum pricing, you know, to start at, but that m an average of what most clients end up spending. I put that on the website, updating that felt really scary and putting it out there felt really scary, but I just said, you know what? I know what these numbers mean. Yes. I know why the number is what it is. Yes. I know that for a fully custom designed client where I'm working with them start to finish, I'm spending 50 hours. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. it is what it is. Right. And so to be able to say, this is what I charge. I know why. And that gave me confidence. Yeah. And so it's, that's, that's it. I just raised my pricing and said like today, like this is it. And that was that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So all this is amazing, but I know what everybody listening is probably thinking and they're like, but there are shockwaves yep. almost that come yep. with that. So we just oh, yeah. share kind of what you shared with me before that your inquiry, you've seen less inquiries, but yep. talk about the conversion of those inquiries and, and yep. just what it looks like for those first four months after literally, I mean, you probably at least doubled your pricing, if not tripled it, I would imagine. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's scary. It's really quiet and it's really scary. Um, I, have way fewer inquiries that come in from my website. Um, and that feels noticeable. Um, it feels absent. And that's sort of something that as an anxiety ridden person that feeds into that of what if I never get an inquiry again? <laughs> what if I just turn the faucet off? Um, however, inquiries do come in and that is an illogical, irrational fear. And the inquiries that do come in have seen that price flag. So anybody who is inquiring already understands that pricing range. So any inquiry that I'm fielding is a more quality inquiry rather than me spending the time on, an, on a consultation phone call or consultation um, Skype with a potential couple, all of the time that I'm putting together a proposal for that couple yeah. and all of that, you know, wasted energy for them to then say, oh, well, we can't afford your pricing. Mm -hmm. um, any inquiry that has come in has that qualifier. So it sort of weeds out, you know, that first wave. Um, so the inquiries that do come in, I've seen a really high conversion rate, which is great. And they see the value in it before they've even spoken to me. And I think a big part of that is that they've seen a website that looks really nice. They've seen a, um, an ability to book an overly user-friendly and the fact that it's geared toward them before they've even spoken to me I think, I hope speaks volumes about what the client experience feels like to work with me. Um, and all of that helps. I also said, so that's for custom invitations and design work that I do for just event calligraphy where I'm doing envelope addressing or signage and that sort of a thing. I set a minimum, which I have not done in the past. This was something that you suggested to me as soon as we met. Again, I chickened out about it. And then after the summit, I was like, fine, Shanna's right. She's right. You're always right. Um, and so I instituted a minimum. And so then this way, anybody that I'm working with for just those um, 
those pieces, I'm able to be able to actually figure out how many how many couples I need to work with because I have a, a minimum number. Without having that number, I wasn't able to, to do that before. Yeah. So I love, I love your story. I think it just is going to resonate so many of us. I mean, go through this, believing will people pay a profitable price and figuring out even like how to mesh your price with the market so that they'll pay for it. Um, And then you feel kind of, that's a hard first six months and you're still in that kind of messy middle of feeling less. But I just want you to end today with, you know your numbers and you know your sales goal and just what what confidence does that give you to kind of hold on during this tough season of raising your prices and less inquiries like how does that keep you from just like immediately slashing your price the fact that i know the math and the numbers to make that sales goal achievable and attainable and it doesn't feel like a reach it feels like a goal but it doesn't feel like it's so lofty that it's not going to happen. Um, there's confidence just in the knowing, yeah. right? And in in being able to say, I'm well on pace. It's the beginning of the year. And I'm on pace for this. And my monthly money dates, I am, every month I'm adding in people who were pending who are now booked. Yeah. And that trend continues. And so every month when I'm able to look at that and say, people are booking, yeah, that's where I'm able to tell myself that the fear is irrational. Yes. Because yeah. the fear is then trumped by the, the data. Right. And to be able yeah. to say, I know that people are booking because I'm adding these people to my client booked list every month. And so the more that I do that, that helps hone that confidence, Um, you know, to be able to step into that and say, I'm on pace for my sales goal. The clients that I do have are super excited about working with me and they see my value and they see that I see the value of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love all that because there is fear with raising your price or changing anything about your approach. And yeah, I don't want to sugarcoat that, especially when inquiries slow down, that feels so stressful, but I love that you're just saying you're equipped with the information you need. And if it were to ever get to a point where you aren't booking enough, I have no doubt that you're equipped with what you need to shift or to decrease what you're offering to still create a profitable price. And I just, I think I'm just so, even just in a year, like the things you know about your money and your numbers, like I'm just so excited for you because now you're getting, you know that data and it's, it's teaching you to build your business differently. And I think you're amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I can't wait to see once you get over that six month hurdle, of upping your prices, what it looks like then. But okay, we always end these with, what is the best thing you've learned about money? Uh, The best thing that I've learned about money is that your enough can shift and that's okay. Um, When I first started my business, I was single. I'm putting a roof over my head by myself and paying for all of my bills and my health insurance and all of that. So my number Um, for what my enough was looks different now that we're married and we have a shared household income and it's a dual income between the two of us. Um, And that number is something that we had a transparent discussion about. um, And that number can shift. But taking a look at it honestly, year over year of what is going to be enough for me or what is going to be enough for us or for our family or what it whatever it looks like for you every year it's okay to have that number feel different but it's not okay to not know it <gasps> oh yes it is okay for that number to look different it, it is not okay to not know it it's so it's too stressful to right. not know what you need thanks for sharing thanks for being so open Um, I can't wait for people to see this and watch this and read your story.